We are learning just this evening that ABC journalists have complained to their management that Palestinian prisoners in Israeli jails deserve equal treatment to Israeli hostages captured by Hamas. The ABC staff also complained about using words like massacre and terrorism when describing the October 7 attacks. But then they complained that they weren't allowed to use aggressive language when reporting on Israel's actions in response. These shocking demands are from ABC staff, including journalists, who are meant to be impartial. We know they're not impartial, and this document that I'm about to show you dismantles any notion that the ABC can claim to be objective when it's reporting on Israel's war against Hamas. This three-page document was obtained by Al Jazeera, of all places, under Freedom of Information, and it details many of the complaints from ABC staff about their coverage of the war. The journalists complained they weren't allowed to use words like war crimes, genocide, ethnic cleansing, apartheid and occupation to describe Israel's actions in Gaza and the West Bank. But here's what they say, and I quote, Meanwhile, we're quick to use terrorist, barbaric, savage and massacre when describing the October 7th attacks. They also said we are far more comfortable in labelling Hamas's actions terrorism, yet lack the language to correctly describe Israeli aggression in the region. I mean, it's unfathomable that there are actually ABC staff complaining that they're quick to use terrorist and massacre when describing October 7. I mean, someone needs to tell these ABC journalists that the use of words like genocide and apartheid would be inaccurate when applied to Israel. ABC staff complained to management that, and I quote, we mention the number of Israeli hostages in many stories, but we never mention the number of Palestinian prisoners in Israel. Well, that's because you cannot compare the two. The hostages, innocent men, women, children and babies captured by Hamas, whereas the Palestinians who are in prison in Israel are terrorists. They're criminals. It's unbelievable. This is what ABC journalists and staff think. Well, joining me now is Spiked Chief Political Writer Brendan O'Neill. Brendan, thank you so much from, for your time tonight. Look, this is coming from the ABC taxpayer funded to the tune of a billion dollars a year. Should we be surprised that uh, this is how some of their journalists want their coverage on the war to unfold? We shouldn't be surprised, but we should be shocked. It is outrageous and actually quite disgusting that there are people at the ABC who think there is a moral equivalence between Israel and Hamas and who want to use similar language to describe both sides. That's like saying there's moral equivalence between a fascist movement and the victims of that fascist movement. That is essentially what these people are saying. And they pose as if they're challenging uh, the ABC's pro-Israel bias. As we know, the ABC doesn't have a pro-Israel bias. It has an anti-Israel bias. But they pose as, as challenging bias. But in fact, they want to bring more bias to the ABC. They want to bring their bourgeois bigotries into work. They want to bring their, uh, uh, ha their hatred for Israel, their Israelophobia, into the workplace. They want to use words like genocide, ethnic cleansing, apartheid state, these very inaccurate, fact-free, bigoted terms that are used against the Jewish state and the Jewish state only. So what these people are actually demanding is the right to spread their Israelophobia on the publicly funded broadcaster. Mm. This is a very serious state of affairs, and I think it really speaks to a moral rot at the heart of the media elite. Mm -mm. Well said. You are so articulate, and that is absolutely accurate. Now, we've seen just overnight that Israel has cancelled its plans for senior officials to visit Washington. This after the United States abstained on the UN Security Council vote that called for a ceasefire in Gaza. Look, this is clearly tensions escalating between Netanyahu and Biden, but to me, it seems like the United States is walking away from Israel when it claimed that it was going to support its stated aim of eradicating Hamas. 
uh, Biden's America is stabbing Israel in the back. I'm really shocked by their abstention on this uh, motion at the United Nations, which doesn't make a ceasefire conditional on the release of the hostages. Let's not forget that there are still many Israeli hostages in Hamas and Islamic Jihad captivity, including American citizens. I think there are six American citizens. And Biden's America seems not to take that very seriously. They're sending a really powerful message to Hamas. What the White House is essentially saying to Hamas is you can carry on terrorizing. You can carry on holding these hostages, which is a crime against humanity, because we are going to put pressure on Israel to stop bombing you, to stop bombing Hamas. So this doesn't only weaken the relationship between the White House and Israel at a really important moment, which I think is an act of betrayal, mm. but it also emboldens Hamas. It sends them a really important signal that even now, the, the most powerful country in the world, the most influential country in the Middle East, is going to put pressure on Israel to uh, down weapons and let Hamas essentially carry on holding these hostages. I, I think what Biden is doing it is he is sacrificing Israel because he's worried about certain Democratic voters turning against him. These are mostly upper middle class graduates, the elected sections of the Democratic Party who have a real burning hatred of Israel. He's sacrificing Israel to win the votes of that section of society. I think it is such a political mistake. It's a moral mistake. And I think it's a really shameful thing that America is doing. Mm -hmm. It is devastating. Um, just before you go, we're hearing that far-right commentator Candace Owens has quit The Daily Wire. Uh, it's a conservative uh, news website. Reportedly over anti-Semitic comments that she has made, that she's part of this kind of... Um, isolationist movement in the Republican Party that's been arguing against the US involvement in Israel, uh, or in support of Israel, also Ukraine as well. Uh, what's happened here? I think sections of the right are going a bit mad. I must say, you know, the kind of very online right, the right as represented by people like Candy Owens and some of her followers, you know, we know that the left has gone completely insane since the 7th of October. Well, more insane, more insane than they already were. They've been on the streets holding what are essentially pro-Hamas marches. They've been mm. damning Israel, the most evil state in the world. They've been flirting with ideas of barbarism and turning their back on civilization. We know that that's what the woke left has done. But I think sections of the online right are starting to do something very similar. And Candice Owens really sums this up. She has she started off by attacking Israel, but it morphed very quickly into attacks on Jewish people. She's now saying that the Jews run Washington, D.C., and they are doing horrific things. And these gangs of people are, uh, have a stranglehold over public life. These are old anti-Semitic ideas, I'm afraid to say. And it re she really does demonstrate that anti-Zionism is a gateway drug to anti-Semitism. And very quickly, hatred for Israel can become hatred for the Jewish people. And I think it's very worrying that we're seeing that across the political spectrum at the moment. Yeah, and at times... Uh, anti-Zionism and anti-Semitism are indistinguishable. Brendan O'Neill, thank you so much for your clear thinking and your writing. We love your work here in Australia. Thank you for joining us.